Hi, I'm Michael Odie, Senior Technical Director for Windows IT Pro. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up shared storage live migration. We are going to use an existing two-node cluster that's out there, and to that two-node cluster, we're going to add cluster shared volumes and a highly available virtual machine. And then we're going to demo how live migration works, showing you how you can move a VM from one host to another with no downtime whatsoever. Okay, now we're going to show how to add shared storage live migration to an existing failover cluster. So, in this case, a failover cluster has already been built. Let's open up the failover cluster manager and have a look at it. Uh, this was built in a previous uh, video in this series, and this cluster is called um, WS2012CL01. It has two nodes in it, uh, WS2012N1 and N2, and it has a uh, uh, storage and it has several cluster disks added to it. Uh, continuously available file server disk uh, is one of them and uh, the disk quorum and other things. Let's first of all we're going to enable cluster shared volumes on this uh, failover cluster node and the cluster shared volumes is going to be used as storage for the virtual machines that we are going to be using for live migration. Okay now I'm going to go ahead and change cluster disk 1 and cluster disk 3 into uh, cluster shared volumes. And to do that, I'm going to select them and then right click to bring up the context menu. And from the context menu, we're going to select the add to cluster shared volumes option. Okay, let's go ahead and select the option. And you see it's offline pending and now it's gone ahead and do the con done the conversion. Let's go ahead and do that same thing to disk number three. We're going to add it to our cluster shared volumes, takes it offline, and then it has gone ahead and done it. So now disk one and disk three are converted to cluster shared volumes. Uh, let's take a quick look before we go on and see what this does in the file system. So let's go ahead and bring up Explorer and look into our C drive and in our C drive, we're going to see this cluster storage uh, directory. This is the mount point. This, this mount point isn't really located on this C drive. It's actually on my iSCSI SAN in the background. That's where these, uh, these two different uh, cluster disks were actually located at. And we created two of them, so we have volume one and volume two. So those are the two different volumes that are in our cluster shared storage. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and put a virtual machine out there. We, I have an existing virtual machine, and we are going to put it over there. Okay, we saw how we could use the failover cluster manager to go ahead and create cluster shared volumes. And we had a quick look at what those are like in the file system. Now I had a virtual machine and I have, that virtual machine was already created so we don't have to wait for it to be created. But let's go ahead and have a look at some of the properties of that virtual machine and uh, see where it's stored at. And you could have a look because you remember that it had that cluster storage addition node into our file system. So. Let's take a look at this virtual machine and I have taken the virtual machine itself and have gone and stored it out there. So if we look at the, the virtual machine's hard drive, we can see that the virtual hard disk is stored out into the cluster storage volume one and it's called OR port VM one. And our cluster, or our virtual machine itself is also stored out there. You can see our snapshot file location is also in, um, in, um, the cluster storage shared uh, cluster shared volume that we created. Okay, and if we have a quick look over there, we have created that virtual machine out there, and we should be able to see it. There's a number out there now, and there it is, our or port VM one, and we can see that we have snapshots, virtual machine, and the virtual machine configuration file all out there on cluster shared um, storage. Now we're going to go ahead and show you what it takes to make this virtual machine highly available to where it can be live migrated with shared storage live migration.
Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the failover clustering manager again. And we're in our roles node, so you can see we have a couple roles out there for continuously available file shares, which were things that we created earlier in this series. Let's go ahead and add a new role now to, um, to, for our highly available virtual machine that we're going to use with live migration. So we're going to right click on it and click on configure role. Now we've clicked it and our new role wizard is going to begin. And now here it is, the high availability wizard. And it asks us to select what kind of role do we want to select. And in this case, it's going to be a virtual machine. So we are going to select the virtual machine option from uh, our list of different available roles. Let's click Next. And now we get a list of the different virtual machines that are out there. And we are going to go ahead and select the virtual machine that we stored on our cluster shared volumes. And uh, there it is, oh, our port VM1. And we saw that it was shared on the C colon backslash cluster storage volume one volume out there in that cluster shared volume. Then let's click next. And now the high availability wizard is going to tell us what it's about to do. And it's going to make a new high availability role for OR port VM1. That's what we want. Let's click next. And at this point, it's going ahead and making uh, OR port VM1 highly available. And it was successful. We can see our report here that it was a success. And now we can see here that there is our OR port VM1 role. Next, let's go ahead and see how we can live migrate this virtual machine uh, from one host to another. And you see we have the two different hosts out here, N1 and N2. And right now it's running on N2, as you can see under the owner node. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to mig live migrate this to N1. Okay, here's our virtual machine uh, role running. And if we right click on this, you can see the different management options that we have available to us. We can connect to it, which would start a console session to it, an interactive session. We could save it. We could perform a shutdown. We could turn it off. We could manage its settings. And here you can see the settings for the OR port VM1 virtual machine. You can see it's running on node NWS 2012N2. Some of the other things we can do, we could enable replication if we want to, but for uh, our purposes today, we're going to look at moving it. And with moving it, we have a couple different options. We have a live migration option, which will move it with no downtime, and a quick migration option, which will move it with a short period of downtime. Uh, the two are different. Typically, we could also move its storage if we wanted to. But in this case, let's go ahead and perform <coughs> We'll select the best possible node. Now you can see the live migration is running right now. And that the current node is WS 2012N2. It takes it just a couple minutes to perform the live migration. And at this point, it has started running and we can see that we've moved over to node N1. So that's how we can perform a live migration using the failover clustering manager. Okay, now I've connected in uh, from a remote network system, and I've got an RDP session up here to our um, to our WS 2012 N2 node. And remember, we had just migrated that virtual machine off that node. Now, we made the network connection this time to demonstrate how live migration can take place uh, while that virtual machine is running, and there can be no interruption of end-user services. So you can see our virtual machine is off running on uh, node WS 2012N1, and that's OR port VM1. And over here, we have a PowerShell script that we can use to run a set of SQL queries on that on that virtual machine so you can see that the, the VM would actually be in use so that's our run SQL benchmark 2 to PS1 we'll point it to that VM or port VM1 
Okay, and there goes our queries. So now the virtual machine is off running on on Node WS 2012 N1. Our queries are executing. Now let's go ahead and right click on it and we are going to live migrate it back to node number two. So there it goes. Live migration is kicked off. You can see the live migration is underway right now. Our queries are continuing to run. There's no interruption in the state of the queries and live migration is started and completed. So now we are running off on node number two. And if we go back to the Hyper-V manager down here, we should be able to see, there it is, OR port VM1, and it's running on node number two. So you can see we are able to conduct the live migration with no interruption of end user services at all.